Now, as you are initiating, starting the project, um, you are going to need management approval. I mean, you are going to need management approval at a, a lot of places in the process. Um, you know, constantly you, you're going to have to make sure even if it's just a check-in to see, are you still okay with this? Is this, uh, you know, are we going in the right direction? Any concerns? Um, but here particularly, you know, uh, you can't start the project if management doesn't approve. And if management's approval is only half-hearted, uh, well, you know, the project probably isn't going to get done. You're fighting an uphill battle. So, um, you've got to get agreement from them on the scope, um, the objectives, uh, what we want out of it, um, and uh, the assumptions that we're going to be making as we go through the process. Uh, as I say, you know, I agree on the assumptions, you know, this, uh, a volcano opening up under, uh, head office and all of our plants is just, you know, not something that we are going to address here. Um, the, the goals here, the overall goals in, uh, in, Business continuity planning itself uh, are uh, to produce effective actions and, and you know, effective, um, workable, um, things that are going to make a difference, not just activity for activity's sake. Uh, as, as we say, there is nothing so inefficient as doing efficiently what should never have been done in the first place. So we want effective actions. We want to reduce the impact of the interruption uh, of you know whatever interruption. And again, you know we're we're going to be looking at different scenarios. We're going to be looking at different threats, at at different types of disasters, interruptions, events, incidents, whatever it may be, um, and. Uh, eventually putting this into a, you know, one big business continuity plan. But uh, for the moment, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, different types of interruptions, reducing, what can we do to reduce the impact of the interruption, maintain or restore, you know, the difference between recovery and restoration, uh, re uh, maintain or restore operations, um, and so, uh, again, you know, what are the disaster assumptions? What are the, the most likely uh, disasters? And, and how can they impact us? And again, you know, going back to risk management, and we, you know, we've talked about this before, and, and uh, you know, what is the impact going to be? How likely is this going to be? And, and doing that... Um, you know, annualized loss expectancy uh, to see which, you know, which are the areas to, to cover first, which are the most important. Um, we've got various tools. Unfortunately, um, a lot of these automated tools for business continuity planning are, are just checklists. Um, they're... Uh, is some that aids data collection. There is an awful lot of data collection that you need to do. Um, you know, if you're uh, going into a sort of a you know, quantitative uh, risk analysis type of business impact analysis, that sort of thing, um, you will, uh, you know, some of the tools are just to help you prepare the report. Um, you know, uh, Management is, is going to want to know. Various people are going to want to know. Um, oh, well, yeah, we talked about uh, insurance. Uh, just mentioning insurance. Often your insurance is, is going to want to know what are your business continuity plans. And so we've got um, a lot of 
uh, reporting of, of this information and, and you know, doing the business impact analysis and doing a business continuity plan uh, helps us in a number of different areas. So, um, you know, it's, it's not just the business continuity plan itself that is the, the product here. Um, there is, um, uh, again, you know, the, the automated plan development. This is, again, you know, it's, it's sort of like a checklist. Some of them are, you know, more than just a simple checklist. They, you know, prompt you, um, have you done this? Have you done it in this way? Here are the sub-steps. Um, here are, you know, possible resources to, uh, to check on. Um, you know, it, it can help you, uh, well, I don't know if exactly speeds the process, but, uh, you know, at least uh, work on it reasonably well and, and hopefully reduce the, the time uh, that we're spending on it. Um, but uh, particularly, it's, it, you know, hopefully going to help you um, avoid missing critical elements of the plan. Um, some of the tools are going to help you organize the teams. And the teams, boy, I mean, uh, we will be talking about putting the team together. This is, this is not, this is a non-trivial task, as we say. Um, and, uh, of course, some of the automated tools, again, will help you with the maintenance of the plan. And once again, uh, maintenance is going to be very important. Your situation changes, and as your situation changes your plan has to change as well. So, um, you know, the, uh, this, uh, you know, you're only once going to initiate the project, hopefully, um, but you will act, uh, you know, you will have to be redoing it again. And when you redo it, you are going to have to revisit your scope, your assumptions your objectives um, and management's approval uh, for the thing. Um, so, you know, that uh, every go-round on this is, is going to repeat um, a number of the aspects uh, that we are working on here at the initiation phase.